So I'm going to talk a little bit about the different types of graphs that we have uh, coming into the NetQS Performance Center from, from our MediaNet 1.0 network, which has been instrumented with you know, various types of things such as NetFlow, which is giving flow information, as well as IPSLA and the NBAR feature. So in this particular graph over here, uh, we can see that telepresence media makes up quite a large part of the information uh, that's being traversed across the network. But there's other protocols as well. There's DNS, there's SIFS, uh, there's TFTP, there's, a, there's a, uh, quite a large part of HTTP as well. You can find out the details of that particular application about where it's seen, you know, that, that type of stuff across time, how much it was seen, uh, by clicking on the thing. And, and if, you, if you scroll down over here, you can see how many packets there were seen for that particular protocol, what was the volume of the traffic, that type of information. Um, going back to that particular screen, there's another portion down here that's really interesting where uh, we basically have these probes set up, these tests within the network from one point, point A in the network to point B in the network. And these tests try to figure out whether there's a reachability issue, whether there's a delay issue, whether there's a jitter issue. And we, we get these measurements across time. And this particular screen just sort of gives you an eyeball estimate as, as across these tachometers where you see the average round trip time coming out of these IPSLA uh, probes is about 13 milliseconds. If you wanted to go even more detailed in the time, you can actually click on the probe itself. And this particular screen is showing you that across time, across the last four hours, uh, what was the jitter? Uh, was it a positive jitter? Was it a negative jitter? And you can, and you, and what you can do with that information is you can start tuning your your router configuration to be able to handle these situations better. Or if or if it's something that's so excessive that you need to, uh, you can't really handle it inside the configuration, it may point you towards uh, changing your service provider or, or changing something about your network topology, or in the most extreme cases is working on a different application that is able to work within those bounds, that, which are not, for the most part, are not network bounds, they're mostly tied to the geography. For example, if you're talking with somebody, which NASA does every day, if you're talking between somebody on Earth and on the moon, there's going to be significant delay. So you know, for those types of things, you either reset the, you know, the expectations that the people have, or you work some, on a different type of application that is able to uh, basically adhere to what are the, the constraints. Okay. Another uh, portion that I wanted to really show you guys was a side-by-side -side comparison of the two links out of a particular branch. So what's going on over, oh, sorry about that. So what's going on over here is I've got um, a Cisco telepresence camera that's being used for video surveillance. We've got department stores actually also using that same camera to count the number of people that come into a store. Are they man, woman, child? Are they, you know, is the child coming in with the parents? Oh, well, which parent are they coming in with? Uh, th those types of things. So it's not just always a surveillance thing. It's a, it's a video camera that's feeding some sort of application. And on this side, uh, we've got a Cisco IP phone that's being used for interactive voice video. Uh, both these applications are going across the WAN to the other side and there's a video surveillance recorder and there's the other half of the video conference over there. Uh, there's a limited amount of bandwidth across these links and there's a feature called PFR which is able to understand the different applications needs such as you know, how much bandwidth do they need, how much delay is acceptable, how much jitter is acceptable and it finds the right path and it places that traffic onto that path itself. So that's the situation that we're in. and we can watch what PFR is doing uh, using the information coming out on Eflow and into the NetQS product. And what this graph is showing on the left-hand side is on serial 1 slash 0, the majority of the traffic, in fact all the traffic, because we only have two types of traffic running right now, is the voice and video traffic from the IP video phone. And on the right-hand side is the video surveillance traffic. So on a, an entirely separate link, serial 1 slash uh, 0 slash 1 slash 1, which is dynamically set by the PFR application. So PFR dynamically realizes this is uh, video surveillance traffic and this other set of traffic is the IP video camera traffic. We've already assigned it what the relative importance is for delay, jitter, throughput, and it separates those two traffic in a dynamic way, creating the access list and things like that, and, and allowing those both applications to actually run over a converged network.